Thank you. Uh, I want to say thanks to Nate, who uh, kind of organized this along with a wonderful team. And I have two concerns for the team. First concern is I hope they pick their classwork up during all this organization. And the second concern I'll share with you a little later. I want to also thank the listeners. Since retiring for the past 20 years, nobody listens to me. And my wife will not listen and my children won't listen. So I want to thank you for listening there, at least pretending to listen. Uh, we hope to convince you, but not uh, most of you, at least the graduates from Rose, to uh, get into something other than what you're graduating in. I did that because I graduated in engineering and switched to mathematics. But I think most of you, we surely do not want to switch because engineering is something we want to have happen and uh, it's where we want people to be. And on the other hand, if you really like something a lot better, then go ahead and switch. This is what I did. When I came, I could not major in mathematics and I decided to uh, that after about 10 years I got into mathematics. Um, the, uh, my professors, when I was about to graduate, I had three professors give me advice. One was my calculus teacher, and I asked him whether I should get into teaching math. I thought that would be a fine thing. He said, that's a terrible thing to do, don't do it. Uh, so then I talked to my, well I didn't talk to my, my chemistry, chem engineering teacher, kind of came up and said, Bailey, you will never make it in graduate school. I didn't even ask him whether I would make it in graduate school or not, uh, but he thought he'd like to share that information with me. Uh, and then my uh, double A professor came up and he alleged that he would uh, uh, get a fellowship at the University of Illinois, which I did, but he put me into power engineering, which has less mathematics than almost any other engineering. And so uh, that was another place that I should not have gone. Since then, I've worked for four companies. Well, after I got through graduate school in math, when I made my conversion, I worked for four companies. I've taught at three colleges. And I was a couple of years, I was dean of the faculty at Rose. And that's my uh, working for the companies was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. And uh, it was a lot of fun teaching at Rose. But being dean of the faculty was not something that was fun. So if you're thinking about going into administration or supervision, uh, you might want to think twice. Uh, nobody's happy. If you can make one decision, half the faculty's mad. Make another decision, the other half is not mad. The advantage, of course, is you've got more money, more power, more prestige, you name it. You've got more of but what you've got more of is people problems. But if that's what you want, we need those. They're very important. Uh, some examples of problems of mine from the real world and also from my world, and I distinguish because some people think it's very important to do things from the real world, and uh, I uh, find both my world is somewhat, sometimes more interesting. One was very appropriate for tonight when I came here, it was raining like crazy, and the problem is to, when you have to go home without an uh, umbrella, the question is how you stay dry. And that was considered by a guy in England named Brown, and he got to publish a little poem on that. Uh, he says, when caught in the rain without a mac, walk as fast as the wind at your back. But when the wind's in your face, the optimal pace is as fast as your legs can make track. So here's my little uh, person. I replace you by a box. And you have an area on top, and an area on the side, and an area on the front. And the wind's coming in some direction there. And uh, so we calculate. And I found that uh, Brown was mostly right, but a fat person should not run with the wind at their back at the same rate as the wind, but they ought to run as fast as they can. Now, one big advantage in publishing in a math journal is they'll take your poetry the same poetry they would never publish in a uh, poetry journal. So there's an advantage if you're uh, a poet with not much skill, uh, try another area and put your poetry in there. But my little poem was, when the wind's in your face, Brown is right to make haste, but the wind's at, the, at your rear, the best choice is less clear. 
You must measure your waist before setting the pace. Uh, so that was one little thing for the fun of it. Uh, I needed that night and coming here because the wind was in my face. Uh, another interesting problem was Ozzy Smith, a great baseball player, and Sports Illustrated had a picture of a bat, and it had a little slider in the middle of it. And that bat, as the slider went down, uh, as, as this, when he was in his hands here, uh, where is this? There we are in the bottom. When it's in his hands, uh, uh, the slider's right down near his hands and he can get around fast. As the slider goes out, it hits, uh, uh, comes out to here and he bangs it and gets more uh, speed because the weight is out here. That was an interesting uh, problem. Actually, it didn't make that much difference, but it was a fun problem anyhow. Uh, also, another interesting one, which I'd like you to think about, don't go to sleep out there. Uh, we've got some jeeps right here at the base camp, and we're trying to get one of them way out into the desert as far as possible. They're full of gasoline, and if they just go out by themselves, they'll get out uh, one tankful. But if you have a second jeep, he can help the first jeep, give him some gas here, and the refill the J1. J1 now can go way out further. J2 must have enough gas to get back to base camp. Uh, one little problem you can think about is how far can J1 go out if you have only two Jeeps at base camp? So you can think about that right now. Uh, now, the problem that we uh, had was N Jeeps. If you have N Jeeps, how far do they go? That was a well-known problem, and I put it in my, uh, 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 the Echoes magazine. And one student, one of the, one of the alumni came back and said, you all have to leave together. And that was the basis of my paper, Jeeps uh, Penetrating a Hostile Desert. You could get out further if you had some wait a while and then come out and help. Another uh, first problem from the real world, I worked for some doctors for quite a while, and uh, they had a problem with the body here where you have all manner of uh, ways where the uh, blood or other fluids can come back, and they want to get an idea of all the little passages. And the model for that is just one passage. Here's that black is the passage, and here's the mixing in the middle of the body there. And this uh, pure stuff comes in here. Well, not pure stuff. You radiate it with uh, I-31 albumin, and then you measure the concentration when it comes out. Well. Uh, this is, I said, one return thing, and you get this equation right there. And without that term, that's called a difference equation. Without that term, uh, excuse me, without that term, it's called a differential equation. You put them all together, and you have a differential difference equation. And that was a fun thing to work with the doctors there. Uh, another interesting uh, thing is when I worked for the oil companies, we were trying to recover oil from uh, an oil well. The first thing you do is just open up the oil well and let it come out, gush this out. Finally it quits, but about half of it's down in the sand there. So you push water in this uh, injection well, and that pushes the uh, oil out. Well, about half the oil is still in there, so then I looked at a couple of ways in which you might get more oil out. One is you set a fire down in there in that injection well and blow air in. There you had the problem of an expanding cylindrical heat source. Uh, the second one was called miscible phase. You pump some cheap oil in the input well and then you try to get uh, as much oil out here and it pushes the oil on out. Here we had a lot of money. I worked for an oil company and we had a fancy gadget to read all this data and we got quality capillary tubes. Now you, you use capillary tubes instead of a little sand there because it's easier mathematically. That's a license you can take and uh, whether it has anything to do with sand or not didn't bother me too much. Uh, but in any case, they did use the data. Here you have a gigantic equation here, this uh, uh, partial differential equation. And at that time, computer time was expensive, but we spent a lot of it and nobody cares there. So uh, finally, uh, as I 
uh, when I became uh, a uh, retired, I had to look for my problems elsewhere. And this one was when I was walking with my wife. I walked much faster. And I, when I'm once out of the street here, I started A. And I go up the street, and she's way behind me, and we cannot talk. And she likes to talk there. And so I said, well, I'll go across the street and come back. And then we can chat a little bit at sea, and then I go across the street again, chat again. Well, the nice mathematical problem was, we're going to cross the street and come back as, uh, and be able to talk as often as possible. And so that turned out to be an interesting mathematics problem. Uh, so, uh, now she did not like the uh, title. The College Math Journal likes uh, titles uh, very short. I had walking with a slower walking trend, and they decided to change it to walking with a slower trend, and she didn't like that title. Uh, finally, uh, I'll give you a take-home exam. Uh, we're hoping that maybe 100 or 200 people might be watching, either on the uh, uh, computers or here, and I'm expecting 10 of you to turn in this uh, problem at the end of uh, a week, and I'm expecting five of those answers to be correct. You send them to Bailey at rosehalman.edu. The problem is as follows. You're making a toy out of a block of wood. Are you waiting out there? Come on. You're making a toy out of a block of wood. You drill holes through all the sides, uh, uh, and they go all the way through. They're square holes. And uh, will the volume be more or less of the toy? Will the volume be more or less? Ah, good, you're awake. Uh, and uh, will the area be bigger or less? By the area, I mean the area that's left plus the area inside that you're still going to have to paint. Will the area be more or less? You're both right, it's more or less. And it depends upon whether you, uh, where you build your hole. And your uh, take-home exam is how will the total area compare with the area of the original cube. So we're going to come out so the toy volume will be uh, the same. Let's see how I said that. So the toy volume, how will the toy volume compare less than the volume? No. I didn't say that. I said an error, error. I failed. Um, Okay, so what we're going to do is cut out that hole so that the area is the same. So the area before you cut the hole and the area after you cut the hole are exactly the same. And your job is to figure out how big that hole is so that the area will be exactly the same. My final uh, remark is to the committee. Uh, I'm sure the committee that organized this thing is uh, shown great skill in leadership and, uh, and uh, being the boss. And they should be very careful not to be led into that unless they really like it. And I want to thank you once again for listening. Thank you.